Hey guys, and welcome to another awesome Studio Scale Merlin Models model kit review. This is our absolutely massive Studio Scale Imperial Shuttle. So I want to take a few moments to go through all the different features of this kit. Obviously, as you can see, it is very big. This is probably the biggest kit that we have done to date so far. It was a real pleasure to put together as far as getting kit parts in for the sample from the factory. We've got very minor changes that we'll be able to accomplish this month and then this is gonna go straight into production. So you guys have just a couple of weeks left if you wanted to be able to get one of these things. So make sure to hop on to MerlinModels.com if you want to purchase a model kit of this one because it will be cut off very soon. So let's go ahead and go through some of the details that you can see on this kit and then we'll show you some of the really cool features. If I rotate this on its stand, you can see we've got metal machined aluminum gun barrels and they actually move back and forth so you can position those in any way that you want to. On the front guns, these just pop on and off. Again, we've got aluminum machined gun barrels here as well. You'll see uh, the head of a nut inside and that's what's gonna provide the tension for the wings so that you can set your wings to the position that you need to. So if you loosen up that nut, it's gonna relieve tension. It's just a friction tension on all of these hinges. And then you can adjust your wings and then just put them back in. And then this just pops back into place. Very, very easy, very simple. You've got a tinted glass front. So this will be a cast piece of plastic that's gonna have the tinting already applied to it. So that's a really nice feature. And then this whole head can just slide on and off. It's very flexible. So you don't have to actually glue that in place, which allows you to do a lot of work. If you're like a LED tinkerer and you wanna do some really cool effects inside the cockpit, you can absolutely go for it and pull the thing on and off. Really nice and simple. To go along with that, as far as gluing goes, this top part here, so this whole top part is the top part of the fuselage. This does not have to be glued either. You can just kind of sand it into fit, and then that can be removed to allow you to access any electronics inside as well. So you can choose what you want to do there. So if we rotate this back around this way, we'll give you a nice view of the back. Inside here, we've got a really cool neon LED strip in the same shape as the original model that used real neon. So this allows us to get the really awesome, accurate depiction of what the engines would have looked like. And this didn't just pop on and off. Or again, if you want a more clean finish, then you can fill some gaps in sand and all that kind of stuff and make this a permanent piece. We've got a lot of this sample piece just press fitted together to allow us to do the reveal. And that just pops into place. The gun in the back is completely mobile, so you can rotate that around as well. Still have the aluminum gun barrels. All of these pieces are little glue-on pieces. This took maybe 10 minutes to glue all the pieces on here. And then if we switch over to the side again, you may see a little faint seam line so we've got a section here that allows us to do the hole for the um, threaded rod that holds the wings together. So these two sandwich in together. So the only actual, what I would call advanced modeling techniques that you would need to be able to put this together is gonna be filling your seam and doing that properly. And that just takes time because you sometimes have to go back and forth. Um, I probably spent about an hour on it. I could spend two hours and get it to be absolutely perfect, but I wanted to be able to show you what that looks like. So that's probably the most advanced feature aside from running your electronics, which is a very logical system. So the electronics go together really easily, but you need to know how to do some soldering um, and how to follow the instructions that we would make in video form for downloading our Arduino program into the computer control board and wiring some things up. This is a aluminum stand and the wires run down into the middle. Then there's a large aluminum flange that gets glued to the bottom of the base. On the back of the base, we still have our signature in power port and out power port so that you can 
put these into a daisy chain effect. So if you have multiple models on the same shelf, you can run them all off one power supply. And then on the back is just a simple button. We still have the same system that we've been starting to use where you can you will always get the standard name plaque. And then if you purchase through full pay, you'll get a exclusive edition plaque. And if you purchase one of our commissioned paint jobs where we actually paint it for you ourselves, then you can get um, a more colorful name plaque. So let's go ahead and turn it on because I know you guys really, really want to see what that looks like. So I'm going to start with the back. So we're still working on the animation cycle, but we think we've got a pretty good start. So we'll continue to modify this until we actually release the kit and once you guys get it shipped. So we're going to smooth some things out and add some more animation effects. But this is the, the basis part of it. So you flip it on. We've got a nice little startup sequence. Super bright. Very, very cool. And then it's going to start just doing a nice little soft flicker. And I think we're going to speed that up, give it a little bit more contrast. And then your light blinks. There's a three blink startup sequence that we saw in the actual feature film. And then it goes into just a, a, a slow blink cycle. So you can see how all that stuff works. Then something else that we added. This is not going to be part of the kit, but we are going to include the code as well as instructions. But we thought with a tinted piece of glass, you can't really see what the original interior of the cockpit was supposed to look like. So we wanted to make that a little bit better so that you could actually see it. So we have added RGB LED lights that are addressable and put a pattern in here that looks really nice. So let me go ahead and turn that on. And it's just got a nice kind of computer screen flickering pattern and that really brightens it up and you can actually see the beautiful and yet elegantly simple cockpit that was in the original model. So those are all the effects. Really, really beautiful. We're going to go ahead and take this whole thing and switch its positions to the sitting version. And then from there, we can talk about it included in the kit. You've got both closed gear, which we don't have installed right now which you've got a closed gear. Then we've also got open gear. We've also got some feet. So we're gonna go ahead and install all of that stuff and show you what it looks like so that you can decide which position you want it to be in. Cause this is again, real big when it's open. So we wanna make sure that you can fit on your shelf. So those two different options are gonna be really useful. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it over and then we'll come right back. Okay, so we've got this whole thing moved into the landing position. And when you are building your kit, technically, if you're an advanced modeler, you could probably switch back and forth between these two, but we do not recommend that just because of the way the feet and the landing gear and all that stuff need to be positioned and glued in. You might damage things if you're ungluing and stuff like that. So we recommend making a choice about which one you want and kind of setting that in position unless you are an advanced model maker and you know how to make some of these things removable. So again, we've got the wings and they can be adjusted back and forth. And then all you've got to do is tighten that nut if you need to. We've got it tightened in a position to where we can kind of move the wings back and forth and they're going to stay in their position. But you can see that it looks quite nice, takes up a much less space in this position and you can tilt it from side to side if you want to. You can see we've got uh, as accurate as possible for the gears. That's one of the few things that the reference drawings don't really show very much of, but we did find a couple of good pictures that we were able to use to set up the landing gear. Underneath this, to be able to support everything, even if we make the legs in ABS plastic, there is gonna be some, some bending and the balance isn't exact. So to make that process simple, what we're doing is we're gonna include an extra mounting pole that your wire goes through, just a black pole. It's really hard to even see, but that's gonna be measured to the exact moment where the feet touch the base. And that's gonna allow it to look like it's completely standing, but we don't have to worry about any type of wibble wobble, bending, eventual breakages of landing gear, balancing issues, all that stuff goes away. So it's super, super simple. I mean, we can rotate this thing in any direction and it looks like it's just sitting there, which is wonderful. So 
This is the model kit. Again, it's only going to be available for just a couple more weeks. It took us a really long time to get this one sampled, but we're all back caught up on schedule. So everything's going to be going into production at the end of this month once we make some small tweaks to just some of the fit and finish. So hop on board, grab one of these things at MerlinModels.com. So thanks very much, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.